Babe, and you wanted it 10 minutes. Told you. Once I start talking, I don't be quiet. Oh. Okay, now we're gonna pick up what I. What you I'm wanted to say something. Yes. Okay. So the people. Um. What happened, buddy? What's wrong? What? Happened? Pick the watch up. Oh, you want here? Give it to me. Bye, mommy. Nah. Okay, Alishka. We're doing the live. No, 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 Henry, don't take that off. It's gonna die. <sighs> okay. It can't come off now. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Are they all back? 117. Okay, so what I wanted to say, what's up? Okay. What I wanted to say is, like, I grew up. Your text messages don't stop. I know, you can you turn it off. I, I, my, it's an airplane mode. I don't know I why. You gotta turn off the iMessage. Uh, oh. Um. God is speaking. Thanks for sharing, bro. God is speaking to me while you're sharing your testimony. Who's that? See, babe? Mm -hmm. You're ready. Mama, where's the baby wipes? <laughs> oh, there they are. La, 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 la. <laughs> okay, go. You wanted to share something. Um. I had questions, too. God has a plan. Oh, babe, everybody wants to know financial. Not yet. Financial, there's well, a different... Well, we'll talk a little bit about There's it. a different part of that. Yeah. That we're gonna... We're in a season still. Yeah. Of where we're learning how to trust God. I guess we can Steward touch... Steward our money. I guess we can touch base there. Well, like, I feel like when it, the, when it started, it started a couple years ago, right? Like, and I don't know. Okay, so this is my part. Like... I always told Ellie, Alex, Henry, like, he me. has a gift, and I, like, he has a gift, and it's a gift from God. It's not, like, mm -hmm. Sorry. what? He was putting the charger in his mouth. Want to go upstairs? No. You want to put him in the Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I'm he's not ready. I don't want to okay. stay upstairs. Okay, you go sit on the couch. Um. Go Sorry really guys, awesome. like that, Sophie's not easy. home and she's okay. usually like the one who helps us. But um Okay Alex, you have some you guys write, write the questions in your in the little boxes, it'll be easier. Um What's it called? Okay, let's answer that question and we'll move what? on towards the financial thing. Alex what advice would you give to someone who thinks that alcohol isn't bad and doesn't want to let it go? Well, if you, that's between you and God. If God tells you to let it go, you gotta let it go. I don't think alcohol is bad. It sounds bad when you say that. I don't think alcohol is, is bad. bad. We're grown ups, and if you wanna have a glass of wine or. Okay, but it's bad to where if it's your. If you're like being convicted about it, it's bad. Yeah. If you. Abuse it, then but it's I bad. would recommend Christians not to drink. Yeah, it's better not to. It, it's 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 if God tells you to let it go, let it go. I mean, you can't serve. I guess you can't serve both. You either serve one or the other, and if you want to serve God, alcohol has no part of that. Yeah. <laughs> the a little bit. So close. Um, yeah. So about financial part. So uh, like I like I was saying. Um, one of the first man these girls just keep girls whoever's watching me stop texting um, <laughs> it's annoying a little bit um, so what I was saying is that like one of the first things that I've noticed about Alex before we even started dating is his generosity and I'm not just talking about like oh he's such a generous guy da, da, da. like no I truly believe that God gives different gifts to different people, and um, and I've realized, I've I have realized, um, in 2016 when I encountered Christ, I think that's when God spoke to me, and He like really like Holy Spirit revealed to me that like you have a gift on your life, and that's generosity, and that's a gift from God. Like you can't take credit for it. I'm sorry, but um, so. <laughs> yeah it's just a gift from god like like a gener like some people they have like we all have to be generous but like so there are it's like fruit of the um uh, fruit of the spirit you know and something that like when we fall in love with christ when we walk walk out our uh, walk with christ it becomes part of who we are but i think that's just something that he was gifted 
um, just from birth. Like that's what God gave him. And so I always, in a way, like when I was praying for him, um, like he was like kind of like like babe like you were saying like we just kind of like always just like he, like he always made good money we just like bought whatever we wanted vacation whenever we wanted we weren't really like good stewards of our money and um, and part some of had, it some had shopping addiction <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> I'm kidding I repented of that okay. um, what's it called um man you kill like, babe so, don't i can't uh keep talking don't read it. yeah it's hard to read it anyways but like, yeah so i wanted to say like for me like i started in a way it felt like holy spirit was saying like this is a gift that he has and that i want to use and i always thought that like okay money is kind of like what took you away from god in a way like i could say that um because you kind of have everything, whatever, you're living this life, everything is good. Um, and I thought that like, okay, the way, like this was just in my head. It's not like a revelation that I had. I just always thought like, I feel like this is how God will speak to him. Like, I feel like there's going to be a point in life where we'll reach something where God, like it's going to be financially and that's how God's going to speak to him. Because again, like that is the part where you felt powerful, like where you knew like, okay, I can make money, I can do whatever I want, like it's mine, nobody pays my bills, da 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 da, you know? And so, I, like it's a, it's a humbling moment, it's a moment where you say, God, every single penny that I make is from you, um, and, and it's you who is the giver. And, and so in 2016, I literally remember we were in Hawaii, and, um, and I think you have like, five drivers text you that they're quitting do you remember that mm -hmm. and it was literally like as if like walls began to crush like it was just like also suddenly out of the blue and like little by little and then like we had a moment in our life like maybe a year like i don't even know what did it start last year or the day or the year before where it felt like as if like anything we touched it was just crashing. It was like as if, like I literally at one point thought, like we're cursed or something. Like I thought, like maybe yeah, it was, like, just the bad luck for drivers. Just yeah, like stress literally. and everything that yeah. It was like, and he's been doing this business for such a long time. Like he knows what he's doing, and so whatever was working before, it was like you could see that like other people are thriving. Other people are like everything is working out for other people in the same. Um, business but like for us it was like as it was just not going good and for me that's when god's that's when holy spirit is like not even holy spirit like i just knew that like okay this is exactly how i kind of thought like what what would happen like this is going to be a moment where god will take us and another thing that i was going to say is that i always told you like god's going to use you with finances because you have such a gift in your life and because when he encountered christ his his desire was to sponsor and again you always sponsored and you always donated but like your desire was to like I don't know crusades uh, oh. sponsor uh, sponsor sponsor orphanages um, like I mean they're big big dreams they're big dreams and it's all like financially like it's all giving financially and supporting financially and and preaching the word and, and helping the poor and so it's crazy because again, like it all works out that way. Like when God has a calling for you and he gave you this gift of generosity, when he's placed this dream inside your heart, um, once you put that dream on the right path and it aligns with God's plan, he's going to bless you. But before he blesses you, you walk through this valley of, of uh, purification, sanctification, and where um, it, it, it's a season of clipping, literally. If every person who encounters God, they go through a season of clipping, and whatever God is calling you to do, He's going to take you through that valley and clip off certain things. So for us, like financially, it's just like God always provided for us, no matter how. Like, like I remember, like so many times we'd sit in church and like it's time to donate and you just get out your phone and like donate a big amount and i'm like did you check our account no i'm like what do you mean <laughs> you know and uh he's like no like i i'm just like god gave me this number and i'm giving it this number and so um 
like me being Christian, like I'm like, what do you mean? Like what? Anyways, and so like you are always just like operating out of faith. Like okay, no, God's gonna give. Like so it's it's crazy because again, God gave you this gift and He gave you this calling on your life, and that's why you even see it differently than I do. Like you trust God differently than I do, and so am I talking too much? Mm -hmm. Okay, go. <laughs> Okay, God, had us, God had us in a season of like 2019, the end of 2018, to where financially it got really tough. Yeah. And it got to where, you know, it was, uh, it, was, it was a season where we had to learn how to trust God, even when we don't see anything. When yeah. And it was it, a season where it's, on it, paper it, we make money and in, in real life it's like, as if it's like, I don't know. Yeah, um, it's a season where we got to trust that God will always provide. Like one thing I understand is like the birds don't worry where they eat or where they sleep. God provides for them. Okay. And so if our heart is on God, like the secret of life is keep your eyes on Christ, on Jesus, on God, and He will provide everything that you need. You don't have to worry about making money or about health or about yeah anything. I like, like what Alex said. The secret is keep your eyes on God. Yeah. Search for me, and you will find me, and you will, you know. Basically, that's what I realized, and we're still just coming out of that season right now. But guys, I want to tell you that I am so excited because I know we're going somewhere, but I just, it's not here yet. Once we get it's, there, it's walking by faith. We'll share it, but like God has big plans for us, and uh, just like the people that He's put in our life. Um, yeah. pastors and, and people that are mentoring us and helping us and praying with us like last year I've had a hard times you know like financially just at work like devils I drove home one time and it was so hard I was crying in the car and I'm I'm trying to pray to God and I felt the devil just grab me by my throat and just start choking me right here and I'm like Ugh, uh, yeah, just trying to weird. break through it and like I try to say my God is bigger than this and he just he, he was squeezing me in the, like my throat everything just dried up completely like the attacks were real. They weren't, it wasn't just like, okay, God, I'm yours. That's it. You know, like my life is perfect now. Like it, it, it's not how it happened. Like it, it went through every day was a challenge. Every day was a challenge. Every day was something, but it got to the point to where like God's like bread. You can't live yeah. life without him. Um, yeah. Like once you encounter him, you can't. Somebody asked, uh, did financial issues cause other issues within your marriage? Um, no. Our financial issues only got us closer because for me like I feel like I'm just flattering myself like you should talk about me <laughs> um, For me like my heart was always like On our marriage like money doesn't matter to me truly I don't know what it looks like on Instagram and what your thoughts of me were um, but don't let that fool you like for me number one is my husband like it's my husband it's not my husband with money or my husband without money it's my husband we're in this together like it's not like i never looked at it as if like you're having financial issues like no it's both of us and the thing is that the, here's the thing when we started having financial issues that's when my excitement went up the roof because i knew god is doing something like yeah she was I'm waiting gonna, for that she yeah. always told me it's like yo watch out because you know like i was preparing him yeah but and like the thing is that I know that God doesn't just allow certain things and then leave you there. No, like I know that God took us to the bottom and I'm not saying even God. It, it's not even God that took us to the bottom. It, it's it's our life. It's our decisions. And he takes you to the bottom and uh, there he is the one that's like refining you. He's the one that shows you certain things that he wants to get rid of. He's sanctifying you. He's preparing you and molding you. And so for us, I know that even for Alex, God said that it's not going to be by your wisdom anymore. It's not going to be by anything. It's going to be by my spirit. And you will know, like you will know that everything from now on that comes and flows financially, it's straight from heaven. And I will get the glory, not you, not my wisdom, not your works. Like it's me. And so it really, truly is so exciting to live by faith and know that God is the provider. Like, because a lot of times we ask God for healing for this, for this, for this, but in financial, we start to worry. Like we start to try to think in our own ways and then you get pride and you get all these things. But well, we that happened yeah. before. And then like yeah. after, after God just started 
like he was my bread i stopped worrying i stopped worrying i got to the point to where like god wanted me to realize or to us to realize and i mean like this is for everybody this we didn't do anything you don't have to do anything you no, just somebody have asked, oh what you, uh hold on yeah you, go ahead um, i'm just gonna read this yeah i lost my time um, Once you, start you have to trust God in everything. Like my saying is like, you have to trust God even when you cross the street to go get your mail because you can yeah. slip and you know, God wants to be a part of that movement. You going to give your mail. When you cross the street, say, Lord, I love you, Jesus. And Man, what? you're like a preacher. That's it. That's not, see, like that's where God is to me. That's where I wanted God in my life. Not like God on Sunday. And then here I'm gonna do, this is our problem. And I have like friends that I talk to, like, like uh. they're saying that, you know, I still gotta deal with all these problems. Well, you know, your problems are gonna be dealt with a lot easier yeah. if you include God in your problems. You go to work and you're trying to fix this, fix that, fix this, fix that. Yeah. When you bring God to it, it just fixes itself. Yeah. It just, it, it happens. You just, supernaturally, it just, God's there. And you, like, I go to work and, it's tough right now with this corona corona and <laughs> you don't know what's gonna happen and drivers and just i don't worry about it i don't worry about a thing god will provides god provides all the time my heart is always the devil always attacks in your life what is your call that that is your calling yes that's why i always told him that like it's gonna like it's gonna be financial it's gonna be financial devil because... doesn't attack me anymore because i got <laughs> my god's bigger than that yeah well, you know what I mean. You guys should start a podcast. I don't know. Like, we're kind of all over the place. <laughs> um, Marina, I still remember when you did a live about your testimony, about your marriage relationship, and my own marriage changed drastically after a testimony. Thank you for listening to the voice of God. Wow, praise God, Vitalia. Um, what helped your marriage stay strong through struggles? Oh, I think I already answered that. Did this change your relationship? Uh, did this change your relationships with friends or others? Yeah, God just began to um, God. Wow, we got somebody from India, babe. Um, God just began to bring new people into our lives and new friends that were just. Um, <laughs> I remember like when I first uh, met up with Sofia uh, Trachuk and Ali Dershbeck, and I just like literally just told them my life story and I was just like this is like this is when I just encounter Jesus Keeping up with the Magalux. <laughs> yeah Alex I'll be number one supporter God we, we got a sponsor over here Alex um what, what was I gonna say um yeah and I remember like I was just like told Ali and Sophia and when they were like the ones kind of like telling me you know you gotta release them to Christ you gotta like let go of controlling and I'm going back to our ter marriage testimony but um with that, what I wanted to say is, hold on. No, I was just trying to see what I was answering because I forgot if oh. this re changed your relationship with friends. Um, so that's when it all began, and um, and that's when literally God started. Uh, oh, okay, I remember. That's when God started bringing new friends into our lives. We went into Church of Truth. We started going attending that church and just like literally God started because you weren't really like you were never really like that outgoing like you didn't really always like you didn't want I didn't like meeting new people yeah. I didn't like change I was comfortable with my yeah. circle of friends that I had and I'm like nope 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 I'm good like I hated going to people's houses I hated like I didn't like it it just yeah. I had my own little thing I was I closed my doors for ever like they weren't open and then all of a sudden just something shifted and God just yeah but yeah. we just had such amazing people coming to our life. Like you guys all know who you are. And for me, what was super different about these people is that like, they were such godly people. They were just such Jesus lovers. And I remember this one thing that stood out to me. I don't even know if I shared this with you, babe. But like, uh, but like, again, and this is just going back to like, um, back to our old life and um and just like maybe this is not even like a big deal but like certain people would like pick on you and like specifically to me and just like say oh like um alex just say whatever just says whatever like he wants and like or like anyways but when we started having um 
this encounter with Christ and like certain people, uh, like certain friends, our new friends would begin to tell me like, man, I love your husband. He's just so raw and honest. Like you don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. And he's like, it's such a uh, breath of fresh air. And to me, like it hit me like a ton of bricks, honestly, because I'll tell you because, because my whole life, like in a Slavic, uh, certain Slavic communities, and this is not to like say anything bad but just like all of us we're all in this our mentality is like oh if you talk too much like you talk too much that's that's like a negative thing like it, it's it's to basically say oh you're just like this or you're just like that and so for me it was something that i would always try to like hide when we would go out to restaurant i'd always like be like this i'm like oh man like he's gonna say something somebody's Talking gonna like like if you would like even order like a drink or something and then somebody would like point out and you'd be like, well, you don't pay my bills. Blah, blah. And then I'm just care. sitting there I like, didn't care what people thought exactly. About me. You didn't care. But for me as a wife, like we have this thing where we're like, we want to put on this image. You know what I mean? So when people started pointing out like things that like I thought were negative about you and they were saying that it's a good thing. Like, it's like my eyes were open. I'm like, oh my gosh, like there are gifts that God gives us a certain characteristic that a person carries that when you're not walking with Christ, it could be used for the wrong. But when you are encountering Christ, like it's a thing that God uses. Like for us right now, we have a five-year-old Vincent and he's not the easiest boy. Like he has like such a strong personality. He wants what he wants. He does not care. And in our community, he's like the bad kid. He's the hard kid. It's kind of like, like, he's oh, a good kid. Don't call him bad but, kid. But, babe, you know what I mean. He's a good kid. Okay, like we say, he's a Vinny, good kid. Vinny, I love you. But like for me, knowing Christ, now I look at him and I'm like excited. I'm like, yeah, he might be like pushing my buttons or whatever. But like God will use this strong personality for his glory if we just steward it right. So that is something that I'm learning a lot. To see the good in people, to see the things in people that maybe some see as a negative. To begin to see it as a positive because literally that's just like to me it was like wow like it was like this new mind renewal yeah marina you have a gift gift of talking <laughs> she talks you'd be so bored if i didn't talk you I knew know. who you were marrying you knew i talked that's why you married me anyway one thing i wanted to share like i came out from the world like i had Keeping up with the necklace. <laughs> yeah, that, that's take a screenshot of that. <laughs> um, coming out from the world, like. How did your husband react when he felt attacked? Oh, by who? I saw that. Well, why when the, does when, he say, "My God is bigger"? When, 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 yeah, when I was driving, like that's why I wanted to spit out because it, like, it felt me choking right here on my throat, and like my throat went dry. I couldn't break out the words, yeah. but. As I broke out, like, my God is bigger than this. That's when, like... Because you were getting attacked about your business, like, all over. Well, yeah. Time. Yeah. What about... Oh, my gosh. Do you want to tell about this story? Remember we said, like, one day we're going to talk about it. The text messages that were so awkward. No, it's too long. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, what I wanted to say is, like, I always... Like, I came from Orthodox family, and I always knew that I wanted to marry, like, a good Christian girl. And that's what I got. But I, al I, I always asked God. I always told my friends and everybody, like, dude, I don't deserve Marina. Like, she's on her knees for like 10 years already, like praying for me. Like, you would never even... Okay, just give me a kiss. <laughs> um, like, I didn't deserve her. And then, like, recently, God, like... You're welcome. I know. <laughs> I always thought about it. It's like, dude, like, I came out of nowhere, like... How did I end up with this? Like, she's been on... Like, she didn't drink. She didn't do anything. Like, I was the... Alexi the bad boy, that's what they called me, right? And recently God's like, he revealed the something- bad cool boy. Yeah, recently God revealed something cool, like, he's like, I knew, I had a plan for you before you were conceived, before yeah. you were, before this earth was formed. formed, I had a plan for you. And I'm like, wow, like that was just such a- Like this call, he said, this calling is not, didn't just appear out of the blue. Like I've had this calling on your life. I just used this amazing girl, Marina. <laughs> yeah. God <laughs> has knock a, some God, sense into you. <laughs> God has some exciting stuff for us. And it's like, honestly, um, once like I finally stepped into this, I feel like 
I feel like I've been asleep my whole life and I'm just about to be born. I feel like a kid going to Disneyland and I can't wait for God to like really start it, really to start like full on using us because I know he's got a big plan for us, yeah. for our family. I just have a question for people. What? Um, see, Alexi. Yeah. Alexi read my mind. Um, um, yeah, God does have a how plan. Does, how, like, how do you guys think Alex should make it up to me? What should he buy me or take me to? It's, it's, all, like... about, it's all about materialism. Huh? <laughs> buy no. or take you? No, okay, not buy. I don't need anything. Like breakfast in bed, bed for the next year or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can promise mm -hmm. coffee, maybe. You don't even know how to make my coffee. I don't. <laughs> make your own coffee. Mine's easy, I drink black. <laughs> Today is the first time I ever heard you, e either of you speak. Love how raw and real you guys are. God bless you guys. Thank you. Hi from Mexico. Thanks for being the sign that I asked for to God to trust him. And it's the time at all times. And do not worry. Yes. Amen. You did an Alexia, but God still blessed you. He has big plans for you guys. Amen. Receive that. Thank you guys for sharing both sides of your testimony. God bless you guys. Yes. You're welcome, guys. Finally. He was so nervous. <laughs> I wasn't nervous. I was kidding, tired. I was like, today scared. was, I think, I think the weather's about to change because I've been really, really tired all day. No, I was the one that was nervous. <laughs> I think you were more nervous. Today. I was. Um, I brought some Ethiopian coffee. So like, this is, I had a couple of these before we started. Um, anyways, so we just want to bless you guys and let you know that like, God is amazing and he hears your prayers and even if you are five years into praying for something like or 10 years don't ever think that god is not hearing you like he has his time and if he hasn't come through yet it's it's not even god that doesn't come through it's it's our revelation of certain things that we didn't receive yet like for us even like when you think about like um, I love what like we spoke about like one of those prayers, you know, and when Vic was like saying that like It's not even about like God sending you certain things from heaven It's about asking him to reveal to you where that door is because he already released everything for you That's on this earth like he gave you he came to give you life and life abundantly That means every area of your life he has already provided, he's foreseen it, he's already prepared it. It's about asking God now, God, I want you and you alone. And I thank you. That's why it's, you know, like some people feel weird thanking for things that they haven't received yet, but that's what it means. It's, it's thanking and asking like, okay, like where is that door? Where is the next move? Where do I go? Because I know you already released it. So, um. Somebody asked how did my parents react? How did my family react? My parents, about what? About when I came uh, to God. Before, before huh. you became a Christian. Um, I've well, always... Well, you were... My parents loved me and they... Um, I you, have great parents, great you family. You always went to church before you and married me. So they knew. Like, yeah, but um, I always uh, did whatever I wanted to do. And... Yeah. Um, His parents are really easy going, so... Yeah, my dad recently asked me, he's like, Hey, so what's going on with you? I'm like, I don't know, what do you mean? He's like, oh, people are asking me, like, what's up with Alex? I said, nothing. Just, mad. just, no, not like that. I'm like, just, <laughs> just tell them straight up how it is. Like, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do, like, I don't, I, I, I changed my life. I'm following yeah. God. Like, I don't, you know, just tell them how it is. That's it, you know? So my parents are, my parents are, they're cool. They're, they're, they don't. Yeah. They're legit. Yeah. And what now, else? What? What else? Um... Thank you for being so honest. How yeah. do your friends react? Um, so, God even warned me about this, that he's going to clip off a lot of yeah. people out of my life. Um, not saying that friends, but even in general, he, he people... He grows you. He takes you to certain... Yeah. Point, yeah. But people are just, you know, there's all kinds of people in life. People that support me, people are... are I've heard the, the, rule, the, the words such as, like, he's fake, this is going to die off, you know, and this... It was... That's, that, that's nice. What? I'm being sarcastic. People are people. Yeah. I don't listen to people. I yeah. care what God thinks about me, me, not what people think about me. And so, you know, it. God will show them what's up. I'm not getting off the train. The yeah. train is only boarding right now. We're only getting. Yes. We're only like. like we're only. We're only jumping on right now. We're about to take off. Yeah. And this is where I said like it's so exciting. 
not knowing where you're going and not knowing where God's going to take us because like seriously it feels like I'm you know a kid about to go to Disneyland and I'm excited yeah. I'm, I'm I'm all for whatever he's got like I just told him I was like Lord I'm a vessel and I want to be used by you you do what you gotta you, do. you do what you gotta do yeah yeah, it's a complete surrender, and it's a life that you have to choose, like, because God never, like, will make you do anything. He, he, he will, he wants all of you, and he will, um, what did mom say? Oh, Joshua. Мое сердце плачет с радости за вас. Мои дети, я вас люблю, и хочу, чтобы Господь вас больше використовував на своей небе. Amen, my mom. <laughs> Prayer warrior. Love you, mom. You know you can mute that chat that way. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to say that like, um, God will work with you as much as you allow Him, and so for us, um, I think just like we just got like I think even like the the people that we were around like they're so sold out for Jesus that when you watch them like. Like, you just want to jump on that train. Like, you don't just want to play Christianity, go to church, um, you know, and, and, God put and us in it. God put us in the right circle because, like, I yeah. started taking, like, I was like, even when we started going to Church of Truth, like, we went first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, and then, like, we don't show up one weekend. And we get, like, I get two text messages from two guys, and Marina gets two text messages from their wives, like, hey, we miss you guys at church. Where are you guys? Like, the just love that family. people like gave us and i'm like wow like i want to be like that and then like hanging out with like it, it, like our new friends it's like we sit around a table and all we talked about was god and we, where before like we talked about like earthly stuff you know um and so like they've helped us grow a lot you know who you are we love you yeah i think god and that's how god works like he that like the different calling that he has on you that's where he'll put you in and like and i i truly believe it's not just even like the certain people that we're at like it's for a reason and you go through seasons like he knows what people you need to be around for what purpose like there there always is a purpose enough henry so um thank you for sharing god bless you both abundantly i'm also a wife fighting for my husband не можу наслухатись вашу англійську, але українську також. Um, yeah, we love you guys. Thank you so much for listening and we truly bless you and we just like hope that this video really really in um encouraged you, Marina. Were you losing hope praying? No, 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 no. Hey. Did you have doubts thinking that it will never happen? Has been encountering God. Of hey. course, I think throughout hey. the whole years um what? Like I prayed the prayer without believing it fully. I um, honestly like I just thought that like it's not even possible because like because he didn't really like like I said like he didn't want it himself like he was like I'm good like why are you praying for me like I'm a good person so I think that's hard like for me I thought like it's easier for a drug addict to encounter Jesus than a person who's not looking for God. Like the person who thinks he's got it all together. So for me, that was hard, but I truly, um, you know, I have such a background of um, prayer warriors and it wasn't just me praying for Alex. Like even right now, like not just my family, like Alex, uh, Dennis Panfilo, Alex, your, your brother, like we met him not long, I met him not long ago and I saw him with, um, Oh, oh my gosh with his wife yeah. and Lianichka and she's and he's like you know he's like I never shared this with you but like I have a prayer list that I was that I prayed for people for years he's like and uh, you guys like Alex was on it and to see right now him walking out it's such a like it's it's not it's not even just what god did in alex's life but it's like it wrecked everybody that's what i'm saying it like when you're praying for one person it's not just about that person god touches everybody like like it changed it changed like praying for alex it changed my family it changed how we fight because when everything is good like you serve god you got it good your whole family is goes to church it's fine but when you're in like a fight like it changes your prayer it changes your walk so of course there were times where i was like i'm done like i think six year mark is where i was at prayer and i just said god i'm done in my heart i said i'm done like meaning like i'm not gonna pray for him anymore and 
I think I shared this story before and one of my friend walked in and she like prophesied over me saying no you're not like this is your cross you must carry and I said okay God because I love God and I knew I'm never gonna divorce Alex like I knew like like he didn't want to divorce me like he wanted to you talking about like be with me he was like I didn't get married to get divorced. in love with me and so <laughs> I didn't get married to get divorced exactly so like um it, it was it was so worth it because in the whole process it changed me and through this change I can encourage all the other wives that are um, that are walking out the same thing and I can actually now give them the tools now that I have it all figured out together but I can I, I feel like I can share my experience and what helped me and the prayers that I prayed that they don't have to go through praying for 10 years because that's not God's will you know God wants to encounter you and like he wants to encounter your husband he wants to encounter you he wants to encounter your kids uh, but a lot of the times we lack revelation and that's why we pray certain prayers begging God and God's like you know this this is not like where's your faith like I didn't even have faith literally like it's that's when things change when I started instead of begging God to encounter him I started proclaiming in my heart and I just started saying like he is a man of God God I thank you that you'll encounter him I thank you that you chose me to be that prayer warrior for him and that's when literally within a month he encountered Christ but do you let me ask you a question do you think that this could have happened earlier you ever thought about it I think so, yeah. If I encounter Christ earlier, and if I started praying, if I changed, but do you think that way, God God has a plan and His timing? I don't know, babe. I think, I think, I think no matter what, like God doesn't ever want us to like, you know, walk half of our life not serving Him, and then like I don't think that's like what God is. But it's it's people, it's us people. You know what I mean? But she He works like, with what we got. I was thinking about that earlier, like, what if, you know, like, what if I didn't have to go through, like, alcohol and all that other stuff, like, but now, like, I think since I'm on the other side, like, I can relate. Yeah, of course, God uses what the enemy meant for the worst, you know, that are still in the same boat as I just got off of. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I can relate instead of, like, you know, there's certain people in, in like, in Christianity that never drink, they never smoke, they never did anything. Yeah. And those people don't know what they're talking about when they t start talking about certain things. And that's the difference to, I think, I don't know, like, I've yeah, thought no, about sure. that. Like, does God allow certain things to happen just to get you to the other side to where now he can use me to help other people, like, where I just came from? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's God allowing. I think it's our choices. And God just is so merciful and good. And he just continues to um, have patience and continues to withhold his anger. Even I could say when there's people praying and interceding and, and like he's such a loving father. Um, I, that's how I think. I don't know. That's how I think. But I think God uses any situation. He uses any situation. And so, um, you know, like you walk through that line of surrender until you completely surrender and and again like even now we're still walking that out we're still walking in surrender every day we'll learn to surrender every day we'll learn to surrender so yes your testimony think, can bring so many people you know, you know the you know, you know, the, you know the, the saying like born again yeah like we're born again we're learning how to yeah exactly we're learning how it's to not walk. just like yeah it's wow, like it's like it's, so it's like that child that you know like child's born and for the year like you teach yeah. him how to walk and hold him and and as a parent, you hold his hand until he can start running. And the same thing God does with us. Like, oh, for sure. Like when you're born again, it doesn't just so boom, you're perfect. You're changed overnight. Yeah. Like I well, was, I feel like I was born again, like at that prayer when God touched me about what, two years ago now? Yeah. But. Since then, like you thought did, you were like, you knew it, everything. Yeah, it did. <laughs> like nothing changed. Like I still had to, you know, like that's when the transformation started. Yeah. It didn't just like, okay, I encounter God. So that's it. I'm changed. Like. No, like I just gave up alcohol like a couple months ago. Like it, so it he wasn't. Was, he works with you. Like he begins to like. Yeah, he began to work. to work. Like it, it, it didn't happen process. overnight. It didn't happen process. overnight. Like I look, I listened to like Todd White. Like oh, you know, like right when I when God touched me, like you know, two weeks later I was preaching already yeah. on the mic. Like I thought about that. And I'm like, no, that's but not that's how I'm saying. Is. Like it, there are radical like yeah. testimonies like that, but it's just not for like that's that's just not with everyone. And I think like, just like the scripture says that you grow spiritually, like you're constantly growing and maturing. It means that like, 
Like even in uh, Galatians, I think it says, uh, put away your childhood ways and like I put away my childhood ways and now man, like it's the more you know, the more it's asked of you, the more you are expected to. Like you wouldn't give Vincent in f when he's five right now a car just because you love him so much. Yeah. Because he would wreck it. Like you understand it. And so God, same thing, even same thing about finances. Like we might feel like we're ready and God's like, I know better. Like I know the level that you're at and I know that you need to walk out maybe a little bit more. Like this, like, like, like you, it's a trust issue that like, you know, that you show God and you prove God. And as you walk through the fire and you learn to trust, he get, takes you through these things and then he gives you more and then he gives you more and then he trusts you with more. So I, I truly believe he knows like he, he knows more our heart and motives than we sometimes do. Because mm -hmm. the minute we encounter Christ, we're like, let's do this, God. And God's like, yo. Send me yo. to Africa, yeah? <laughs> He's like, yeah. Like you can't even go like... pray for people. Like, seriously? <laughs> so, yeah. It's good. It's good. I think we're just in the beginning. And that's why it's so exciting. How you guys as a family stay on fire for God in dry seasons? We don't have any dry seasons. <laughs> Our season is spring. It's just, it's blooming. We're growing. There's no dry season. So when I encounter God, that's when my dry season kind of, it, it, I don't, do I say, want to say dry season? It wasn't dry season. It was a well, season of. The thing is that everybody defines dry season differently. I hated it. It was tough. It was, I didn't understand it. I'm like, what's going on? Like, you know, like. I heard in church that they preach like, oh, you know, like come to God and everything, you know, your life changes into good. Like I was expecting like, so like, you know, everything's going to be perfect when I came to God. No, bro, it got worse. It got, you know, business, financial struggles, things, just everything I touched. It seems everything like you're walking went, the other way. Yeah. And, and I was like, really? Like, is this what it's all about? Like, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, this is, this is not what I signed up for. This was, yeah. it was tough. It was hard. It was super hard. Yeah. And so true. now there's no dry seasons because God lives in us. Because again, you're mature. You have, you have, I think, dry seasons. You're not five anymore. Yeah, dry seasons, dry seasons is when you eat on Sunday and Wednesday at church and then you do whatever you want through the regular days. That's your dry season. That's when you keep going back and forth. When you eat God, when you... Or when you rely on when feelings. You, when you have God every day in your life... There's no dry seasons. There's no seasons. There's nothing. It's you're one. It's like well, I, I can't. I can't. Seasons, I can't. I can't pause my marriage. Depends. I can't pause my marriage with Marina for a month and not talk to her. Right? Like we're. You, you probably could <laughs> if you wanted. To. No, but I'm just saying example. Like you can't put God on pause. Like yeah, you can't once, unmarry. Once you once you have him, it doesn't. It only gets you one more. Like you're hungry. Like imagine you wake up in the morning. You don't eat first day, second day, third day. Same thing with God. Like I like. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, if something else goes on my mind besides God, I'm like, God, I'm sorry. Like, where are you? I need you. Are you I still think, around? I truly think that people define dry seasons um, differently. So for some somebody, they might say they're looking for God. They're doing everything on their part and they don't feel God or they don't feel him speaking or, or whatever. So I think every person, it really truly depends. It's not a question that you can just answer because for Alex, dry season is like one thing and for somebody else, the dry season is completely different. Yeah. So like for you, let's say for instance, the dry season when was when you encounter Christ and it was awesome for like a week, but then everything started crashing and you're like, what the heck? Like maybe that was a dry season for you. For, for me, dry season was when, when like eight months after I encountered Christ, um, like I was not flowing in the river. I was not drinking the new wine where it's just like, you know, like you close your door and you're just like in his presence. Like I did not feel his presence. Like for me, that was a dry season and it was very frustrating because I was like, God, you see my heart. You see I'm doing everything for you. I'm searching for you. Like I am desire, And it's not that I'm doing it for you. I actually desire you so much. Like, why are you touching other people and you're not touching me? So for me, it was a lot about like feelings. Until I learned, and I, and I think God was like, hey, I want to teach you to walk by faith, not by feelings. So for me, that was my dry season. Like right now, I don't count that as a dry season because I don't rely on my feelings. Um, 
so for me i feel like i'm always drinking from god whether i feel it or not like i'm always drinking because if i know like for me the biggest revelation um of the scripture was be still and know that i am god like for you to know that he is god and like that i am with you always i will never leave you nor forsake you like it's not a feeling it's a knowing knowing it's a deep revelation understanding that the scripture is is is, uh, is spirit filled it, it's 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 god's word and if he said that he's with me always that means he's with me always it does not mean oh i don't feel him so he's not with me so now if i'm going on a walk and i'm like you know trying to enter into his presence and i don't feel it like it doesn't scare me i'm not like oh my gosh i'm in dry season god where are you i'm kind of like you know what god you are here like you are here right now and maybe the reason why i don't feel you is because i have so much things in my head right now that i need to clear so i don't begin to blame god like i know he's there so that was my dry season yeah marina that's what i meant by dry seasons what you experienced yeah definitely that's when you just continue to push through i think that's where god uses to teach you that you don't walk by feelings but you walk by faith because feelings are good um but it's not what it's about it's about faith it's about knowing and having that deep revelation so um yeah cool this was fun we love you guys and honestly i'm so glad we did this like i'm really glad we did this i feel like um if like whatever this was like i hope this inspired you guys i hope it inspired um women men couples um if you feel like this will help uh, men, I know mo mostly females follow me. Please do repost, and you're welcome to tag me. Um, <coughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I've saved the first part already. I'm gonna save this part. I'm gonna post it on um, YouTube. Uh, you can send it to maybe men. Maybe there's a lot of people that know Alex. <laughs> they probably somehow know Alex, and that's what truly is exciting for me because I feel like um, so many people know Alex from the past, and so seeing him now. And this is the words that are coming out of his mouth is a testimony already and it carries so much power and authority and I'm just excited like I was so excited for you to come on and share because like I was telling him I'm like now it's your turn like now it's your turn to speak up and use this platform to bring Jesus to light like to allow other people to 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 feed off of what you've been walking because you're not meant to just like keep it for your own um, Jesus said you know what's cool is like you know? I asked the Holy Spirit to lead this yeah. whole thing. And Marina led? <laughs> no, well, it's okay. I gave Sorry, you, Holy I did, Spirit. <laughs> I let you do that, no problem. But, like, God took the fear away. Like, I, I don't know. I wasn't scared about this. The thought about it during the whole day was like, ugh. I need to. That was so why? weird. I, like, literally told him, I'm like, babe, let's do, like, uh. The minute he said, uh, I know that that's a yes. <laughs> because usually he's like, no. <laughs> And this time you were like, uh, you know, it's like a kid when they ask for something, you're like quiet. Then you, like, that's what Vincent says. I uh, maybe means yes. <laughs> that's how I felt. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's doing it. He's doing it. But I was so nervous to, towards the end. Um, so yeah, I hope this blessed you. We love you guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pray for you. I know there were a lot of, uh, I've seen throughout the live people asking for prayer for anxiety, um, uh, you're welcome to write them right now whatever you feel like you want prayer for I don't know if we're gonna pray for every single thing but um, just as a prophetic uh, declaration uh, this will be you know God can see your your heart and God could see your your prayer good thing you did it was great um, yeah I feel like now finally you got to share your part I don't think I scratched the surface no you much. didn't you just write like you didn't even I don't know. Because I think you took over my, my life. Right. It's supposed to be me. Okay, okay, you guys. How about, like, I just give you my Instagram and you can do a live on my Instagram alone. That way I'm not, like, butting in. No, it's okay. Hey, I, I give you all the power. <laughs> prayer for husband. Uh, yeah, you guys can go ahead and write your prayer requests. Okay. Um, but... Keep up, family, in your prayers. Just please, feeling anxiousness throughout all of this going on. Oh, this coronavirus. I'm excited for this coronavirus. 
There's nothing going on. Yeah, like this is what the, the enemy is trying to mess up God's little plan. It ain't gonna work. Yep, because families are getting closer together. Yeah. They're spending time together. They're not. Yeah, who knows they don't if have, would do a live with They don't me. have <laughs> coffee shops and restaurants open to where whatever you know you spend a lot more time with your family, like playing with kids and something that something that actually we've been. I'm feeling. I'm feeling kind of sick. Alex, pray for me. Uh-huh. Alex Mikhailuk. <laughs> hey, listen, you're the Pray you're the husband. One, you're the one with the power, bro. You're the one with the fire. Where's Ruben? <laughs> you're the, we're all carrying the same power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, this was good. This was good. And you guys, don't let this coronavirus scare you. Like this is, this is just the enemy trying to you know distract you. And this is the time to press in. To get to know Jesus. Fear, God. Yeah. There's no fear in God. There's no fear in God. If we have fear, that means we trust our own understanding and our own um, basic understanding. But people are if dying. We, I feel guilty enjoying this family time. People are dying all the time. That's the thing is that people have died from other viruses. It's just not daily on the news. I, th- I think there. this has a lot to do with elections. There's something going on behind the scenes that they don't want us... Um, yeah, Karush, I'm not gonna get in that, but um, this is the time you should be getting closer to God and not fearing and worrying what's gonna happen. Because if you keep your eyes on Jesus, He will take care of every aspect of your life. You don't have to worry about food, where you eat, where you will sleep. No. Like he, he provides for all the animals, all the birds. If a storm comes, God doesn't tell His birds, "Hey, you know, like go find somewhere to." for shelter like he provides everything for them even in yeah. the storm and so it doesn't matter how bad it gets here we're here we can't avoid it we can't run away from it we can't hide from it like it you know we were supposed to go to hawaii and thinking it's going to be better over there we're but to go to palm springs yeah first. we're supposed to be on vacation right now it's spring break and so like people are hiding oh i'm gonna go to hawaii because it's better over there well it's not better they're shutting down the beaches and they're doing this and that and i feel like it's worse in other places so it's keep, everywhere. you know, search for God and, and he'll take care of everything else. You don't have to, there's no room for fear. Yeah. Um, please pray for my brother who's struggling with drugs. Let's pray for the youth that is struggling with all sorts of addictions. Yes. Okay. Hmm? Yes, I'm a single mom not working, but I have total peace. God is in control. I have seen him through so many times. A man is there always. It's going to answer. And, wow, we've been here all, two hours already? Yeah, people need to go to sleep. How, how, how are kids so quiet? Vinny. I know it's wrong to feel uh, guilty, feeling blessed. How do you feel joy knowing there are people dying? How do you feel joy knowing that there are people dying? What? Joy? Yeah. Hmm. There's people dying every day, not just of this. The joy is, it's such a like, it's such a like state of, like joy is not like sitting there being happy. Joy comes from the Lord. Um, And there's two different things. There's joy, but there's compassion. Like you might have compassion for other people, but like feeling guilt, that's not from God. Like that's clearly from from enemy. And he is a, he is a, he is a, like he is a spirit of confusion. He wants to like, the Bible says that he comes, um, he comes as an angel of, uh, of light. So even like certain things like that, he'll confuse you to make you feel bad. That is not like, that's don't think that if you feel bad that that's compassion because that there's two different things that's not what jesus has called us to jesus felt joy jesus felt love but he also had compassion for other people you see when he was going to um resurrect lazarus like right before he grieved and he cried like he had the same feelings that other people had there there is a again like it's such a revelation that has to happen in your heart to understand um self uh what is that word that i'm looking for self um 
not self-righteousness, but like self-humility. I think, yeah, that's what it's called. Self-humility um, by like, oh, I'm, like I can't feel joy because other people are um, dying. No, joy comes from the Lord. Joy is who you are. Joy is part of you. It's who you are because joy is Jesus. And if you got Jesus in your heart, that's not something you can turn off and turn on. It's something that's inside of you. So joy and then you can have compassion for people that are dying and you can pray for them and you can do all these things. Don't, don't do that, don't do that. Um, somebody just probably like did that on accident. So yeah, I hope that answered your question, but that's, that's just my opinion, that's what I think. Um, so, yes please, unspoken prayer request, much needed and appreciated, amen. So we just bless you guys, we love you. Um, maybe we'll do this more often, babe, like keeping up with the Magalus. <laughs> no, that's not a very spiritual name. Um, it's not about us. It's about it's Jesus. Not about, uh, it's keeping up with Jesus. How about that? Keeping up with Jesus. Um, so we love you. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this helped. Spread the word. Share. This was very raw and honest. And we did not plan this. We did not like go over what we're going to talk about. We did not like write things down. We wanted to. But we were just like, hey. Yeah, she's like, um, prepare, write things down. I'm like, no. Nah. Well, I just wanted you to prepare like, so you don't forget certain things. But um, I, I didn't write I didn't, a book. I'll read I it. Didn't, I didn't touch like. I tried that. I'm not a writer. Maybe one day. Somebody said I should write a book. You talk a lot. You can write a book. You have a lot of words. Um. Anyway, so are you saving this life? Yes, we are. I already saved the other one. I'm going to save this one and I'm going to post it on YouTube. Um, because... I know many of you maybe send it to uh, men that don't have Instagram. I don't know. We're Thank like later somehow we need like do like a more what like formal type of formal not formal like, but a, like a testimony yeah like recorded testimony yeah but something any more. videographers over there <laughs> oh we got plenty of friends with that clearly when you put Alex in a spot about his testimony wait what. Anyways, okay. um, yeah, we love you guys and so glad. Thank you for saying this to your story. So we're just going to go ahead and pray over you guys and bless you. And we believe that um, the God, it's not us. It's not uh, It's something that we do, but it's the power and the authority uh, of, our, of our words and of um, Holy Spirit who is inside of us. And he knows your heart. He knows our heart and he is ready like he is on the move he wants to answer a prayer he wants to reveal himself to you he wants to show you what he's capable of and he wants to give you a better life and a life that is abundant and it's not it's not necessarily materialistic things always but it's 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 a it's something that you can't buy money can't buy and it never runs out of stock like toilet paper <laughs> right like it's always in stock joy is always in stock Love is always in stock. He's always there available 24-7. Toilet paper. It's back <sighs> at Costco, I heard. You didn't go over before what you were going to talk about. Not oh, no at idea. all. I have no idea what I was going to talk about. Um, not nah, so. Um, but yeah, we love you guys. And let's just pray, babe. You're going to pray? Okay, I'm going to pray and then he's going to pray. Um, Alex wants you to pray, so you have to pray for him you have the gift of healing um, thank you Holy Spirit we thank you for tonight Lord we thank you for every person that is tuning in Lord that tuned in that got a word Lord for an open heart for an open spiritual ear ready to listen to receive father we thank you lord that we get to share our testimony father and we get to share what you've done in our lives lord we get to share what you are doing in our life father and we get to share you we get to boast about what you do and what you are capable of lord you are the lord of our lives father we thank you holy spirit we thank you holy spirit i i pray for every single person right now holy spirit that is um that's put prayer request, Lord Father. I ask you, Lord, Holy Spirit, that right now you would encounter them wherever they are, Lord, that you would reveal yourself, Father, to them, Lord, that you would bring them a, like a, a, like a 
deep revelation of Jesus, Lord, a deep revelation of who you truly are, Father, that the words that maybe we released that were not understood, uh, that were not understood, Holy Spirit, that you would be the one who reveals it to them, Lord, in their spirit, Lord. I know, Father, that you are on the lookout, Father, for those who are searching for you, Lord. So I just pray, Father, for every prayer request, for every need, Lord, for every husband, for every wife, for every marriage, Lord. Father, I, I pray for them, Father, that you would begin to do your work that you would begin to knock on the hearts father that are searching for you lord you would begin to reveal what intimacy and what marriage is all about holy spirit encounter every single person father we pray um, i pray against depression lord i pray against anxiousness uh, against fear and every every a spirit that is from the pits of hell i pray against it right now i bind it and make in the name of jesus and i just and five i seconds. just uh, sorry five seconds love you guys we'll keep praying for